Hello and welcome to my video. Today, Tiger Lily and I are going to paint this in hopefully just under one hour. Hello and welcome to my video again. Uh, now that we're past my silly intro, um, what I thought I'd do today is whip you up a quick storm as fast as I can. So I'm going to do um, I'm going to do the sky first, and then I'll add the landscape. And it's going to be one of those dark skies where you get s sudden bursts of light on the landscape below. So we'll just um, we'll just see how it goes. I'll really do my best to stay out of your way. Okay. So this colour here is it's a mixture of honestly, it's quite well. It's everything really. I just used up stuff that's sitting on my palette, and this is made from um, Payne's Grey, Royal Blue. I might even shove a little bit of um, lapis lazuli in there. I'm not sure yet, but what I want is a really overhanging dark sky, probably a light spot here, and um, as I said, bright light hitting the landscape. So the thing is, when you're at this stage, is to not be afraid of what you put on your board or canvas. You can do this on, on either really. This is board and um, my usual size because it's something that I can cover for, uh, well, reasonably quickly for a, a, a demo like this. And it's 80 by 60. As usual, the measurements will go on the screen anytime soon. And um, so it's just to sort of be be exciting. <laughs> Some people find that easier than others. Not sure when I was last exciting. But anyway, that's a whole new story. So um, let's have something here. Keep in mind the sort of skies that uh, Turner used to paint and also Constable. They just sort of went for it which is what I'm trying to do here. So let's let's go for it. Let's, um, let's have a nice bit of red through there. Oh, the red that I'm using is Japanese red. Just a touch, not much. I mean, it won't be, you know, raw Japanese red. It's mixed in with the, the colors. So I'm going to put that there. And I need to think, just plan ahead slightly what I'm going to do with my landscape down here. And I think it might be sort of flat over there and then a, possibly a hill here. I'm going to keep this to, um, well, it won't be very many colours. It'll be um, Japanese red, royal blue, titanium white, Payne's grey, um, possibly a little bit of um, a little bit of lapis lazuli, which is in a little container like this. It's very expensive stuff. This was given to me as a gift by one of my students in uh, 2019, in fact. And I'm going to mix it. Uh, I'm going to mix it in with the colour that I've got on my palette, which is basically that. Um, there it is, powder. If you can see that. And I'm going to mix it in using a muller. And a muller is a glass thing like that. That's a muller. Remarkably small muller. A remarkably expensive little muller, actually. I think that was about thirty euros, which is some. Um, Close to thirty dollars, I suppose. It's not really much money when you think about it. It's a, you get a muller is for life, so I'll look after this one. So I'm just going to add a little bit of powder, uh, the lapis lazuli powder, to what's on my palette. I might insert a few shots of me doing this afterwards. I don't want, really want to move my camera at the moment, to be blunt. So. Um, all you do is you put it you put it on the palette and then you just rub this thing on it flat side down obviously and uh, it mixes into whatever you've got there and it will, this will come out even though it's a, a nice pale powder it'll come out as a, a very dark color just going to add a, tip, a touch more oil it's an amazing color lapis lazuli and you can, it makes you realise why it's so expensive. So it's a real dark midnight blue. 
Now, because this is this is not like the lapis lazuli that um, the the old masters used. This is highly refined, um, extremely well ground up. So I don't have to spend hours mulling it or mulling it. Um, so I'm just going to get a little bit of that and just sort of put it in here. You may not even see much of a difference, but uh, it'll probably show better on the video when I've come to the end. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some on the palette knife and then put that on there. And then maybe you'll see better that colour within that shape there. It's, um, it's subtle when mixed with what I've got going here, but uh, at least I can um, I'll know it's in there. Okay, so let's just have that there. I've probably lost it anyway. Nice dark cloud, dark sky rather. The clouds aren't in yet. Hanging down there a little bit. And then I'm going to do the... I don't often do this. I mean, I use paper a lot, but I don't often do this on skies like this. So the next thing I'm going to do is start just smudging it around, see what sort of feeling I can get in the sky. Let's have some strokes that way. That may remain dark. Let's pull that up there a bit and across there. The thing with painting is um, when I when you when you get to the stage where you um, are brave enough and you start throwing paint on a, a board or a canvas like this, um, it's quite incredible what you can do with this stuff. Which is why I think people are so attracted to, to painting. It's um, quite it's quite a mysterious process. And stick roughly to the rule of thirds here. Just take that straight across there, like so. Okay, so that bit of paper has had it. That's um, completely covered in paint. So now let's get even more light there. Now you could say, why didn't I just paint white into that? Uh, good question. Glad you asked. Well, because it would then start to blend in with all the other colours and it would cease to be white. Unless you do it afterwards when it's dry, but of course I'm trying to do this all in one go. Um, I will add white, but not yet. I'm reducing the amount of paint that's actually on the surface so that I don't end up with too much, um, too much mud. And I don't care about the big streaks. I wonder if the big streaks are actually picking up. Oh, I've just realised something. My lighting. This yeah, OK. That was silly of me. OK, well, it, it's darkened everything down a little bit, but it, I think you'll still get the picture of what's going on. Sorry about that. Light spots. So um, it, it's a remarkably difficult room to light this. Right, now that's got white board showing through there, and I want to keep that. And um, because I will be putting a little bit more white on that, and I, as I said, I don't want it to mix too much. So now, let's just generally make it look nice and streaky, because I don't care about the streaks, what I'm after. Uh, is a feeling of a very, hopefully, interesting sky, very stormy sky. And um, there's only one way to get it, and that's to be brave. So the next thing I'm going to do is I think I'm going to put a bit more red in it. So, as I said, it's Japanese red, quite hard apparently for a lot of people to get. Um, Le Franken Bourgeois, they have exactly the one that I like. And um, it's, uh, but you could use any red really. You could use, you could use um, K2 
cadmium red if you want. Because when, it, when you're painting uh, pretty well wet on wet here, um, it's just putting in a red rather than Japanese red. If I was uh, showing you some pure Japanese red down here, which maybe I will, I'll just put a bit on my finger here. Um, it's that sort of red. And as you can see, I hope, that's really quite bright. So um, it doesn't matter what, whether that stays there or not. Uh, th and uh, that leads me to, um, although I will smudge it a little bit, if you do something like that, it's not a mistake, you can always find a use for that later. So um, I'm just going to put in a few more sweeping, could be rain, possibly thunder, just about to hit sort of marks. How do you explain a how do you explain a mark? Well, it's you can't. It's it's got to have um, it's got to have a little bit of fire in it. I mean, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't dream of doing this like that. You know, carefully positioning every little bit of paint because I, I don't want that. I want great big statements. And the fact also that the, this um, board has been gessoed and it's got lots of brush marks. I've sanded it uh, but I've deliberately left quite a lot of brush marks in the um, gesso because I like the fact that it picks them up as you go across and down here you get very interesting things happening in your paint. So we've got a nice bit of dark there. I think we'll have it even slightly more doomy, I think, at the top. Um, almost straight Payne's grey. Straight out the tube, almost. Not quite. So let's just get that working away. A little bit under there. So we've got. Um, I'm gonna. Maybe there'll be a bit of a misty landscape through there as well. So that it actually fades into the um, into the storm, so to speak. So we've got that red mixing in there, and we've got this. And I think we should have another dark bit there. Am I out of the way? I hope so. Um, right, if you saw the intro to this, you may have realised by now that um, my cat, Tiger Lily, is actually not helping me paint. But she is being very helpful by staying in the other room. And uh, she's quite good. If she was in here, she'd be quite happy to sit on the windowsill, except when I'm painting uh, in this room I have to actually close the shutters on the window to stop any reflections. So a nice dark shape there I think. Okay so we've sort of got a the sort of spread that I want there of tones. Now I have this um, big brush here. Unfortunately I didn't I don't think I cleaned this one in time. It's got its um, sort of dried into the brush a little bit. <clears throat> but I'll see what I can do with it anyway. Um, it still works quite well. It's making a few streaks, but it's actually not bad. No, I think, no, it is bad. I don't like that. I'm going to find another brush. And lo and behold, I see one sitting there over in the corner. I've got a little, a little bit um, behind on my brush cleaning lately because I've been making so many videos, and also I'm, you know, I'm doing other work as well. I sometimes, not often, not as bad as I used to be, um, I sort of finish a painting and I think, oh my god, I've got to get on with, I've got to get on with my book design work. And I've got to do this, and I've got to do that, and then I get sort of slightly slightly held up with the um, tasks that really I should be doing. So no point telling me off. I already know I must clean my brushes uh, more quickly when I finish the painting. So we've got quite a, that's quite a doomy sky. There's a 
few bits I don't like. I don't like the um, fact that that's not blending in quite enough there. I'll pull that down like so, so it looks as though it's sheets of rain, possibly. And what should we do here? Yeah, I think we'll just pull that across that way a little bit. So if you're if you're a, um, a relative beginner and you're afraid of painting skies or you think you can't paint skies, try this method. I think you'll find it quite enlightening. It's good fun too, because you never know quite what you're going to get. Well, in the beginning, but as you um, as you practice more, you do actually start to uh, plan a little bit. I don't like to plan too much. Um, so now I've got some titanium white. And I'm going to put it on my palette knife, quite a lot. And I'm just going to lay in a bit of shape here. So a little bit of white there. Now, because I'm working on almost no paint here, the white is staying nice and clean. It will, it will um, stain up a little bit. So between shoveling the white on, I'm uh, just giving the palette knife a, a, a little wipe. Let's just have something like that. And I know at the moment it just looks like a complete load of rubbish. And I think we'll bring that right down here. Let's have something intense there. Okay. And a little bit more. In fact, I think I want something there. So if you've, uh, yeah, as I was saying, if you if you want to paint skies and you're nervous, um, the best thing you can do is forget the blue sky with white fluffy clouds. They, they make me nervous, frankly. Um, and some people are very good at it and they look really realistic, but they can look static. And uh, maybe you want static. I don't know, but I certainly do not. So I like I like fire and brimstone, and it ref it, it is reflected in how you actually attack the painting. In other words, don't hold back. I'm gen I'm, what I'm doing here in my mind, I'm not thinking of the final result. I'm still on the road to a final result. So uh, to try and plan anything too much means that you can uh, come across some kind of um, pitfall. So don't let yourself get in that situation. Keep it as loose and mobile as you can and then see what happens because eventually along the way the more you do this the more you, s you literally see the light and as soon as you see the light chase after it Let's have a nice bit of light through there. you see sometimes just one mark is all you need at, at certain times in a painting and um, Like so. Right, so next stage. Sit with the palette knife, at least for now, anyway. Uh, the next stage is back to my big brush. See what we can do with it. as I always say, I'm touching up the sides of the brush, like so, not the tip. And quite lightly, the board, board's wobbling a bit, but it's, um, I'm still barely touching the surface. I'll keep that sweep across there, quite like that. Yeah, you wouldn't want to get caught out in this weather, would you? Or maybe you would. I quite like it. I, <laughs> I went for a walk the other night, um, as I do, to stretch my legs. And um, 
we live in a house which is about I suppose hundred and hmm, how far is it 150 meters or even yeah, well roughly yards I suppose away from a very quiet road and um, I think what should we do here um, it started raining uh, and then suddenly it started thundering and I thought well it's, I quite like being out in a storm until a lightning bolt came down and managed to earth itself I suppose 300 yards to my right in a wood an almighty crash and I thought hmm maybe I'd be, better be getting home but uh, it was quite I find it exciting just to in fact just hearing thunder okay now what am I going to do there am I going to take that I think so. I think I'm just uh, back to the palette knife very briefly. I'm just going to put some paint here. Okay. I'm going to almost connect it to that, I think. Or maybe I will connect it to it. Let's be brave, eh? What's the point of not being brave? Okay, so I've got a really quite intense light spot developing in there. I think a little see if I because I've got that paint on there now, if I clean my palette knife and then I really gently go over it, it you'll notice that it takes out the greys and intensifies the amount of light. That's one way of doing it. That's not what I normally do. So back to the back to this. Isn't it? I'm going to want some rain, I think, coming down across that way. Let's just add a little precursor to some rain. Mix the grey in with some of the white there. That gives you another dimension, that gives you another layer. So there'll be white clouds and then there'll be darker clouds in front of a very darker sky. I hope. It's always good to add, I hope, when you're doing something like this, because if it works, you hoped well if it doesn't work it's just another little bit of experience to help you avoid doing that the next time and um, there we are that's a bit more light there I think okay back to the big brush time to give it a, a wipe I mean it it's a sort of um, there's hardly any paint actually coming off if you can see that there And then let's see what we can do with these clouds here. Oh yeah. Okay, some nice bands of distant rain possibly coming down there. Slightly straighter. Now if you get um if you get a line like this, which you may be able to see, it's not very prominent. Uh, on the painting but um, I don't like lines that are too straight for too long so that's the time when I would use the corner of the brush just to break it and then go over it again to add a different shape to it like so it's very quick very easy Up there, I think a few more down here now you can imagine when this is uh, finished when I say finished I mean finished for today when this is dried off you can add any color you like to this sky using a glazing technique I have uh, glazing videos which um, you'll find on my channel and in a nutshell it means that imagine this is bone dry and then you just cover it with I don't know anything yellow if you want just a um, you know quite a lot of oil a little bit of yellow I can't give you the ratio because it's it's sort of what feels right if that makes sense it's um to the point where when you're glazing it's almost drippy but you don't have to have it that way you can have it as quite stiff sort of paint um, and then you wipe off the bits that you want to reveal and you leave the yellow where you want there to be yellow but so you can get different tones of yellow uh, if you watch one of the videos on glazing, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, it's always better to show rather than talk. A certain amount of talking, I think, is okay. But 
Now, so what I'm doing here, I'm bringing the sky right down into, into sort of nothing land here, um, because uh, it will be something land eventually. And in fact, over there, we've got some distant hills at the bottom of the sky, just poking through, even without trying. So that, that was quite simple, wasn't it? Um, just spread that round a little bit there. Right, I think it's going okay. So the landscape part, now this is also fun. It's all fun. Try to look at it as fun. If you, if you uh, want to be a painter and you start a painting feeling stressed out because you think you'll make a mistake, don't do that. Try and, try and imagine you're having, just like, I don't know, imagine you're a kid again and you're sort of doing finger painting, that sort of stuff. So now, here we are, I'm gonna use I'm going to use, what am I going to use? I'm going to use Payne's Grey and a little tiny bit of uh, Japanese red. And in a minute I'll be putting some sap green in. But what I want to do first is I want to get, I want to get a dis dist different layers of distant landscape. Now I don't care if, if there are hills here or not. Um, but I'm going to sort of just add a few little impressions of something over there. Quite a monotone sort of picture, really. So there we've got, uh, let's, let's, let's just use that shape that's already up there. We'll have a little bit of, little bit of dark on there, a few, light, a few bits below it. So as you can see, I'm, I'm building the landscape from the si skyscape. I see, I see that when I look at a painting like this, or any painting, I, I see a skyscape and I see a landscape. Because to me, they're quite different things. And uh, I don't know, maybe it's just my way of simplifying stuff in my, in my head. Okay, so a little bit of contrast over there. How am I doing for keeping out of the way? I think, um, yeah, I hope, I hope I haven't been in the way anyway. I get all kinds of advice from people about different angles to, to um, use my camera. Um, and I do know about camera angles. I mean, I've directed quite a lot of uh, bits of film in the past for commercials and things like that. And uh, I've directed photography for fashion shoots for magazines. All kinds of stuff. So I do understand that. However, um, when uh, if I put the camera over there, looking across this way, everything for you will be distorted. Nothing will be in focus apart from the bit that's in the focal plane. Um, my camera is quite new. I haven't had a chance really to spend time sorting out my things like that. But I, I, I actually do think it's better for you to see the picture from the front. And of course, it's a continual battle keeping out of the way. So perspective. Someone asked me about, yeah, big question, always been asked about perspective. How do you get perspective? Well, the way you get perspective is you paint the landscape into the sky, paint the sky into the landscape. As soon as the colours start to mix, it gives the illusion of distance. As you can see there, this bit of land here, just there, that dark bit is in front of this hump in the sky. Now, it could be maybe, maybe a cloud look in the camera, what does it look like for you? But it could be distant mountains. I'm going to keep it as distant mountains because uh, I can. And then let's get some little shapes going through here just to um, give the feeling of detail and things going on there. And then down here I want to do something really bold now because I don't want it to be just horizontal lines. I want something to take you into the picture. If you have too many too many horizontal bars, it just I think it becomes a little bit monotonous. So here, so that bit of red that was on there earlier, you see, it it just disappears. It's not it's not actually a mistake. It's just uh, my uh, another one of my favourite sayings. It's a little bit of something for later. Okay, so this is the, I think this might turn into um, a landscape with snow without really painting too much snow. 
So down here, all I'm going to do is just get a few little shapes in there that could be fields with a bit of snow sitting on them. Sitting in them or on them, I don't know. And then I want a nice bold statement here. I want something there. Why do I want something there? Well, it's all to do with leading you up to the um, main attraction, possibly. So let's see, what should we do there? Let's break up some of these bits, just with shapes. Could be anything. If you are, if you're nervous about landscapes, this is, uh, I can't emphasize more strongly, this is a really good way to get you to the point where you become so loose you will accidentally, or no, that's the wrong word, you may automatically paint a landscape without even trying. Once that starts to happen, your fear goes away and you suddenly become a landscape painter. I'm going to make a bigger, bigger tree there because I, I like it. <laughs> that's the technical reason there. I'm going to be adding a bit of snow with a palette knife in a minute, but uh, at the moment this is really just a sort of, it's at the planning, planning but non-planning stage. So is there actually a plan? Okay, what should we do here? Should we have a, let's have a little line of trees coming across this field to there don't really care what happens at the bottom of them because just with a touch of the brush you can just hint something and let's have some light lines here could be snow sitting on the top of a ploughed field something like that maybe I, s I still may add a little bit of green in there but maybe it's um, turned into the wrong time of year now let's, see. let's, let's try um Let's try something over here. Let's have a few, let's have a little humpy thing over the back there like that, just because it looks nice. There. See how easy it is to eliminate the stress? So I'm left with that there. I'm left with that white bit in the corner. I could actually just leave it. And um, one way of leaving it would be to say, well, this is a bit of raised land. These are fields either side of whatever it is that's going on through there. Let's take that over that way a bit. Um, and, the, and the field could be like that. Whoops, I pushed too hard. Let's make it look like it wasn't a mistake. So that's another way of resolving something. It's almost like snow has been drifting in that field. Maybe, maybe for this video I'll leave it like that, just for you to ponder. And then when I come back to the painting, um, I'll do something else with it. Because it's dry, when I come back to it, uh, it won't matter if I make a mistake, obviously, because I, all I need to do is wipe it off and um, this will be revealed underneath. So there's a little line of trees there. The one on the left looks a bit like an elephant, but never mind. Um, what else should we do? Should we, in fact, shall I even leave it at that? What I could do, we've got lines going this way, we've got lines going that way. I could, in there, do lines going that way and then put these trees back. So just a very light touch down through there and then put the trees back. You may not see it on the video, but it, uh, you'll see in the picture at the end. So, there we are. What should we do now? Let's try a few other little tricks. Um, paper, a bit of paper. I'm going to stand back by the camera for a moment. Just have a look. Hmm. Okay. So, what do I want to do? I want to put some light there under that tree. Now, why do I want to do that? Your guess is as good as mine. There is a reason, actually. It's purely because light catches the eye. 
contrast is the thing that you must have in a painting, really. Unless you're painting something that's um, very, very um, Monet on a bright, sunny, hazy day, then then you wouldn't have quite so much. Well, you wouldn't have that, this much contrast at all. You'd have um, lots of colours that are in key to each other to um, show the hazy sun effect. So you would um, you'd probably use quite a lot. Of, you'd either use a lot of colours or you'd use few. So uh, it's up to you to decide on that. If you look at some Monet paintings on the internet, you may get an idea of what I mean. Right, so there's another little white spot there. Um, I've seen a few things I don't like. I don't like the red that's showing through there, so let's not worry about it. Let's just take it off. Okay, is there anything I don't like? Well, yeah, there always is. I want to bring that up a bit there. And these tree shapes here, for now, can just be that sort of size. I don't know what sort of tree they are, but they're obviously evergreen type trees. Although in a moment, I don't know, shall we experiment with a bit of green in there as well? Just so you can see uh, what you can get away with in a painting. So I'm going to use um, this, which is light green. It's just called um, light green. Uh, straight from the tube, not a lot of it, just um, a few little dabs with a palette knife. So I'm putting a little bit on there, like so. What do I want to do? Do I want a little bit of green over there? Maybe I do. Just, just to show you, because you could get a little bit of green showing through in places. And it may, I don't know, it, it's something for me to look at and consider when I go back. I don't think I'll do... No, I'm not going to add any more. I think I'll just leave it at that for now. And um, I think maybe call it quits. This, is, um, this has been a let's get you going painting sort of video. There's nothing highly finished in it. It's, um, it's just uh, the basics, really. What I, what I like to do, what, what I try to do, um, before I go on there, yeah, I'm going to add some snow in a minute. So what I like to do in my videos um, is get people going, because um, I, I do get a lot of messages from people, and they say, oh, you, I'm almost brave enough to get back into painting now. Well, it's like, well, when you're hungry, when is a good time to eat, you know, when you're hungry? So um, if you want to paint, when's a good time to start? And in fact, you know the answer to that. It's, um, now, now is a good time. I'm not sure I want these trees here now. So, I'm going to remove them and I'm going to simplify it just a little bit. I'm going to just put a line through there, like so. And then it's, uh, it always fascinates me how something can become something else really quickly. Let's see, what else should we do? Maybe, maybe. Okay, here's a thought. Okay, so I've got that grey tone there and I've got a shape that could be a, some kind of tree there. Okay, keep it fuzzy and fuzzy and loose. I'm going to loosen these up a little bit too, make them slightly more fuzzy edged. No idea. As I said, no idea what sort of tree it is. And I'm going to just sort of get some more greys into that. And the reason I'm going to do that is because when I put white on it to make snow now, I want I want the grey and the white to, to work together. And do I like this? Do I like that? Uh, more to the point, do you like it? What do you think? Let me know. I always like the comments. can't answer them all, so if I don't answer a comment, um, don't take it personally, it's just that there are quite a few um, thousand comments. Do I? Hmm. Right, these trees here, I think I'm going to lose them too. I'm going to just. So this is. Let's turn it into that. Okay, that's sort of interesting. Let's, put, let's just do that. Okay, that's really pulling the eye up the picture now. I don't know what it is. It looks like a half-finished motorway, but uh, it won't in a minute. 
Um, let's just pull that that way a tad. And then I think here, hmm, let me see. So I hope the, the message I'm trying to get over to you is that um, nothing, nothing is necessarily finished. I'm going I'm to simplify that lot. I want to just put a bit of grey on that. Let's try that effect. Yep, good, I like that. Right, so we've got twinkly white bits in there up to this point here leading into the sky. So now I think um, I'm going to get a little bit more white paint and I'm going to start putting snow in. I know, I know it's um, not that time of year, but uh, people do ask for snow scenes. So what you ask for eventually, if I want to do it, you'll get it. Of course, if I don't want to do it, you won't get it. Um, but maybe you want something that I've already painted. Seems to be a, a, a rush of people at the moment who want uh, seascapes, which is um, understandable. They're nice things if they if you can paint them and they work. Um, so I will be I'll be doing more seascapes. So I've got some snow on here, <laughs> and I'm going to start doing stuff with it. So I'm going to just put some lines over there. Unfortunately, there's a desk to my left, um, so I can't, I hope I'm out, let me just turn and check, yeah, I'm out of the way, good heavens. Um, so there's some snow in the distance. I'm, what I'm doing, I'm turning the knife this way and that way, because the paint, as you can see, it's still clean, is mostly on the top edge of the palette knife. When I turn it this way, it's all along that edge at the top there. So when I put it on, I can then rotate it to pick up or not pick up paint. So I want a bit of paint now there, so I just rotate slightly. And then I get uh, a little bit of snow. Okay, let's have a bit more snow. I used to think snow was actually quite hard to paint, but it's not that difficult really. It's um, a lot of palette knife work is for me in my landscapes is like ironing just back and forth back and forth um, and it lends itself to landscape because um, there are a lot of lines in landscapes lots of parallel lines but not quite parallel you don't want to be too parallel with them. So there oh yeah I like that I like the way that these actually start to zing when you put them next to each other so by putting that white on that gray it's turned this dirty now so um, I'm going to just get some more clean white and um, start working down the picture and maybe we can get a few angle changes in the actual ground as well. Let's see, what should we do? Let's have um, a bit of contrast right through there. Okay, good. more white. I think we should have some shapes like that across there. To begin it look a bit like, um, I don't know, it could be somewhere in Canada, but also it could be Siberia at the moment. Let's uh, put a bit more in on some texture. Let's have, um, let's have a nice light bit there and some very light bits down there. You see, snow doesn't have to completely blanket a landscape because it could be snow that's um, just arrived and it hasn't had a chance to do any blanketing, or it could be snow that's on the way out. And um, just so that it's, you know, straggling snow. And let's have a, a line across that way too. Don't always. Um, don't always follow the whole line. Well, that's not very clear, is it? So I've got a shape in here, I've got a sort of field shape. You will get lines and marks on the ground that aren't necessarily all going that way. Generally they do. But it's actually quite good to break it a little bit and just have like something like that where maybe the snow hasn't melted quite so much here, but it's melted a bit more there. That's my um, that's my way of thinking. That's how snow sticks in my mind. So over there, I think it's looking a bit blank, um, 
sparse so let's just put a few a few little bits just a few touches in there so what I'm what I'm hoping to do with this you see is to build up textures that get get your brain uh, putting things in their right places so you're doing some of the work for me or your brain is anyway well your brain is you of course it is um, and uh, trying to make it exciting too let's just have a little bit going up that bit of a hill there and then just below those trees up to the top and then mixing with the greys that are already there I'm going to have a quick look. Yeah, it's definitely um, snowy. Anyway. Right, so what should we do now? Let's clean the palette knife. And what should we do over here? Let's say, um, right, so the ground goes up a little bit there, I think. So we're going to have a slope coming down here. Then there'll be some kind of natural barrier, and then there'll be a gap and the bright snow below it. I, I um, it may sound really strange this but uh, just to drone on about this weird memory of mine I, I, I pretty well remember every scene that I see and I've seen snow I mean well I'm actually Welsh but um, we get snow in England get lots in Wales uh, so I have good sort of stored memory of snow. So a little bit on the horizon over there, just catching the light a little bit. Just um, so as you as you start to build up things like this, you uh, I don't know whether you're the same as me, but um, I almost get flashbacks, and I think, oh yeah, I remember that. I remember that nineteen whatever the year was. Um, seemed actually like in the 1960s that the snow was deeper in England I guess global warming I know there are people who say global warming isn't happening but I, well I don't know what to say to that but I mean I do remember winters in the 60s were fierce and uh, particularly 1963 there was a terrific uh, blizzard that hit England and I remember it well um, because when I looked out my bedroom window, which was on the first floor, one morning, um, I, I struggled because the window was hitting the snow, which had settled uh, up to about 12 feet deep. So, um, and it just doesn't, doesn't seem to happen like that anymore. Anyway, that's off the subject a bit. But So, I, all you need to do really, when you're painting any kind of landscape, is just look into your mind. Go back remember what you've seen and utilize it and don't be afraid to be um, a little bit untidy how you go about it because uh, let's have a nice big drift of snow down there it doesn't have to be perfect because uh, who's to say that uh, wherever this is in my head it wasn't exactly like that So, be, be experimental, be exciting. Now, down here. So we've got whatever that is. Some kind of clump of trees, I suppose. I'm going to put some strong white just there. If I've got any left. Nope. You do get through quite a lot of white paint when you paint these sort of pictures, but what the heck? It's a, it's a painting, and if it's any good and you leave it to your grandchildren, chances are they'll leave it to their grandchildren, and it'll always be around. So, what's the cost of a little bit of paint? We've got a hill over there with no snow on it, and um, I might have to do something about that, I think. So I think um, before I get there, I'm working my way that way. I'm going to try and resolve what's going on down here. And I think I'm going to um, do it this way. 
In other words, quite a lot of white. And I'm going to start pushing it out that way. In fact, I might use a bigger trowel. I have several trowels. I've got one which I use for cleaning my palette, uh, which is this one. As you can see, this is a serious bit of trowelery. Um, but it will get the effect that I want quite fast. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. whole load of paint. I'm going to put a load of white paint on there. Tons of the stuff. Great big pile of paint. Make the corner in there interesting and slightly sharp rather than round and featureless. Give it a little bit of presence. So I've got a nice pile of paint there. And then I'm going to exaggerate that line there so it's quite crisp, as I said, and leave leave those lumps. It's quite nice. It looks like uh, lumps of snow. And then with this, now it might be tricky on here because I can't get down here without adjusting the whole easel. So I'm going to go as far as I can. So. I'm, in fact, can I? Yes, I can. So I'm just going to pull that across. Try not to hit the thing at the bottom. There, some interesting ridges. I think one of the things that makes snow... <laughs> I think one of the things that makes paint look like snow is that when you don't be too perfect because um, I'm well aware that snow can look perfect just after it's uh, hit the um, hit the ground for a while but eventually it gets bumps and marks and footprints and bits of the landscape poke up through and all kinds of stuff starts to happen I'm going to do the same thing there just a little bit like that okay and then down so, a couple of times and then across again like that well it certainly looks cold now down here uh, I can work in reverse to get the effect I want if I'm careful I can drag white up that way Quite a sort of tundra, a tundra y difficult one to say that. It looked like tundra, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, and then down there, let's just mute that darkness a little bit there yeah, and just put in some put in some snow. I know some people are gonna think this is water coming up here. But uh, it isn't. It's not meant to be anyway. This could be a way of painting sea, actually. If you imagine an aerial shot looking down onto a beach there, that would be, this would be a good way to do it quite effectively. So I still want that little corner to be reasonably sharp. But also, I'll tell you what else I want that corner to be. So I'm squeezing the paint off the big trowel and I just re-put it back on so there's like a bead across there. I'm going to just do a few touches over there. like that to get some texture in the landscape and goodbye to that bit of green because who needs it and then just make it quite light in that area and I think apart from what I'm going to do to that hill all of those hills I think we're almost there now that doesn't mean to say you can log off <laughs> YouTubers have a continual battle trying to get people to stay on their channel, but I guess it's down to what, what you want in a video, um, what you want to achieve, whether you've achieved it before we've got to this level. Maybe it was there was just one bit that uh, inspired you. I hope even just one bit makes me happy. But uh, if you are still here, I hope you're enjoying it, and thank you for being here. So, what should we do down there? It's quite nice. Okay, so I've got, uh, I've got some paint here. I'm just going to put some on this. There. So 
So next time you go to an art shop and you buy a nice delicate little palette knife, remember this. Remember what you can do with a wallpaper scraper. You can get some quite interesting effects, even if you do get your shoulder in the way and people can't see it. Right, I hope you can. And I'll just bring that down there a little bit, I think, and with a slight lean that way. Yeah. So back to my delicate little um, palette knife. Question is, where do I put this something great thing? Okay. I'll show you my palette in a minute. You can see the disaster that uh, this painting has come from. Or maybe the disaster that the paint has made. Who knows? It's all down to personal preference and um, whether, you, whether you like a, a look of a painting or not. This is definitely on the tonalist end of things, as most of my paintings are, because um, I'm basically a tonalist. A um, bit more paper. Not everyone's cup of tea, I totally understand that. But there you go. Now, so we've got these hills. Um, we've also got a bit in there, I think, that needs something, but I'll come to that. There's always something you can, you can go on and on and on, but there does come a point when you have to stop, uh, just so that you can assess something a bit better. So I'm just going to put some um, snow just on the side of that hill there. I hope you can see that. Can we just reenact that? Yes, of course you can. The camera's in the right place. Okay, a little bit of light there. So, right, so this is grubby. Now, I need some clean paint, so here's a bit of clean paint. Not a lot for this because I don't want to, I don't really want to shove a load of paint on the hills because um, it'll just be too much because they're further away obviously and uh, everything is smaller and muted slightly. So we just have a few, a few bits there and then there's a chunk of trees here and maybe a little bit of light in the trees because it's not completely solid a few gaps in there and a little bit down the bottom like so so that gives a i hope feeling of a bit of snow on a hill over in the background and touch over on the right hand side i think tiny bit in there maybe And if you can do it in a few seconds, and it looks okay, walk away from it. Okay, so these trees here, whatever they are, I'm just going to break them where they touch the snow. In other words, I'm going to scumble the edge just a little bit, just to soften it, so that it's not just like a, a hard line. So it's a little bit of snow through the trees through there. Yep, that's good. And a little bit more just on the tip of the palette knife. I think a little bright spot in there and there. Like so. And a quick drag across there and there. Just a few little light areas just to add a bit of interest to an area of the painting that was just going a bit too um, a bit vague, a little bit too vague. Vague is okay in some places, but there are also places where you need to make a bit of a statement. Um, and this could be one here. Uh, I think it needs a few more little twinkly bits in there, just to give it something to break it up. Okay, I think that's going to be it for this painting. Uh, I will return to it and I'll show you how to put a glaze over the top. Um, it'll probably be a light blue glaze, just to get some blue shadows into the um, into the snow. Um, so before I go, um, if you want to do one of my Zoom classes, there will be a link below. Just click on the link, it'll take you to the company that does the bookings. Um, and ooh, yeah, like that. That's good. Uh, what else? I have a Patreon page if you decide you want to be a
patron. Um, don't feel you have to, obviously. Probably, I don't think I need to even say that. But if you do, uh, it would be very kind of you. Um, and if you are a patron, you get a slight discount for, on the cost of the lessons. What else? Anything else I need to say? Other than, I hope you've learned something, hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, for those of you who are about to ask me to do a snow scene, there you are, I've done it, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Thank you.